Hello and welcome back to another video. About two weeks ago, I made a video saying that I was gonna buy this 1994 Toyota pickup. Obviously, you guys already knew I bought this vehicle already. So yes, about two weeks ago, I went to go check out this Toyota pickup. Watch my other video about the story. And yes, I did end up buying that. Um, I went there, took a quick 10 minute look at it. By the time I, the first time I saw it, I already knew that I'm buying it. But yeah, I went to his place. Um, like I said, has a bad head gasket. The owner, he owned it since 2000. So about 22 years. And I think his truck had a bad ga bad head gasket last November, versus November, last November, so about five months ago uh, during the middle of winter. And I think he hasn't drove it since then, but it is what it is. He told me that he was late for work, or he was late. To, he was late to go somewhere, and uh, he just drove it really hard on the highway on a cold day. I think he didn't let it warm up or something, but I don't know. Somehow, just head gasket blew, and then he even drove it back home with the way it was. So I ended up buying it. It's a 1994. The 94 and the 95 pickups are super rare. Not not super rare, but they're super hard to find because they're the last years. And everybody likes them because you know they're the last year they have the third brake lights and such and such. This one is a five speed, uh, which is a perfect candidate for a three four swap, which is what I'm planning to do. Uh, he recently got it repainted um, back to its original red color because it was fading already, which is very common on these Toyotas. So it's really nice, it's a really nice, and here are the keys for it ignition topper key and then gas cap um the fuel door um key because the fuel lock was broken so i went ahead and ordered new ones i've been super busy because like i said we just moved so here's the thing literally on the day when we closed on our house this truck popped out and i was like man i have to buy it and that it was such a hectic day so yes i bought this car this truck on the same day we closed on our house and then we ended up moving and I just don't have time to make a video about it. So it's been about two weeks. I want to show you guys. You guys seen some photos already if you guys follow my Instagram. The only thing I've done to this truck so far was I charged the battery, added some coolant, started up for about 30, about, started up for about three minutes. It was super smoky. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, I got to shut this off. After that, I ended up um, vacuuming the inside, cleaning out the inside, so the inside is all nice and clean, and everything's been wiped down. So, without further ado, check out my 1994 Toyota. I present to you my 1994. This is one of my favorite years. Just so, so beautiful. And like I said, the color, the color is really pretty. Yes, I have to show you a little bit of that. It's really nice and pretty repainted and it has a layer topper which is the perfect size this is the perfect size this layer topper was made <coughs> exactly for these pickup there's no expansion gap unlike other toppers it's really nice there are a few small flaws um, that I'll show you guys but nothing too crazy like something like that it doesn't have the perfect paint job or the overall paint job is nice but it does have a little bit of scuffing uh, but nothing that's a deal breaker so let me show you guys the outside real quick <clears throat> and it has some 31s it don't have the manual lock hub but that's easy to add on or convert over to so look at that fender no rust right here no rust on the panel so you guys can see right here the bottom balance is dinged up and again that's that's easy to just delete small little dent right here but nothing crazy little nicks right here but nothing crazy still really really good v6 baby look at that <coughs> perfect grill doesn't look like it's leaking too much cv axles looks good it definitely needs a full baseline. If I do a 3-4 swap, I'm still going to give it a full baseline. These are the 31s. Not the best tread, but decent enough. 
So like I said, man, still really nice. Has a few rock chips and stuff like that, but nothing crazy. Um, the antenna, I took that off. <coughs> I took that off because I, I was putting my car cover over it and the antenna was blocking it. So remove that. So we'll go to the passenger side. That's it right there. It's really hard to film this because this is at the side of my house. So, so you can see one flaw right there is I don't know what happened right here on the cab, but it definitely got dinged in. And it looks like it got dinged in uh, before they did a paint job and then they painted it. So, but other than that, it's still not bad. Just a little imperfection. I did notice that the doors do have a little bit of rust, which is really common down here. You guys see that? So. Like I said, it's not the perfect truck. It's like 90, 90% good. All manual doors. And the manual doors are nice. It's just simple. It works. It's better than the electrics. And also no crazy sunroof. I like the sunroof. My old truck that I had, that I did 3-4, had a sunroof. But it's so inconvenient. If one day that glass breaks, it's just super expensive to replace. So I prefer no sunroof. But look at that. Interior is super clean. Um, like I said, I did went ahead and vacuum it, uh, wipe it down, wash the floor mats. It does need like a, a simple shampoo, so I do plan to shampoo it this this summer when the weather's a bit warmer. Uh, but other than that, nothing crazy. Glove box is nice. <coughs> box dashboard is all nice and pretty. Has a little simple aftermarket Sony. All the heater panels works. Um, has a good cup holder. Everything is just really nice, super clean. Seats are flawless, at least for the passenger side. The back is nice. Something's going on with the back plastic. You can see right there, see how it's popping out? <coughs> so I gotta fix that. But nothing that's a deal breaker, guys. Nothing like a deal breaker. So that's the interior. Like that. And the only thing that is missing on the chrome is this chrome piece here. So if anybody has a chrome piece for the rear passenger, let me know. And again, when I bought it, the fuel door was broken. So I went ahead and ordered one on eBay. These are really cheap. They cost like 10 bucks on eBay. You can order these. You just pop out this tab and then put a new one in and you have a new key. So, and it comes with a key. So super simple. I'm not gonna crawl under the frame, but I can. you guys can take my word for it. It's rust free. Original steel wheels, it's typical 15 inch steel wheels. Um, these are 31, 10.5, 15s. We have another small flaw right here. And again, nothing really crazy. Like I said, it's not the 100% perfect truck, but it's really nice when you look at it far away. And then like I said, it does need a new rear bumper. So I might just find a stock replacement or go with aftermarket trail gear. This piece does need to be fixed. Looks like there's a small flaw to it. Nothing crazy. But everything is really nice here. No plastic liner or anything like that. But again, if I do plan to keep this long term, what I might want to do is I might want to go ahead and put some bed liner in here. You guys can see that. This is fiberglass layer, which is a really good brand <coughs> for making uh, toppers. And it does have the key lock as well. The key has with it too, so really nice. So check that out guys, my 9094. And again, it's easy to spot the 94 and the 95 just by looking at this right here. If it has a third brake light, you know right away uh, dead getaway, it's a 94, 95. That makes them super, a little bit extra special. And look at that door panel is all nice and clean. And like I said, just a little bit of rust on the doors down here, which are common spot, but nothing too crazy. Typical one uh, R150F transmission. And then this has the G29, uh, G254, which is the four five six gear so that's really nice four five six gears are perfect um, match for the 31s a little tear on the driver's seat but nothing too crazy um, the fabric is not super bad seat bill is still really good 
nothing crazy on the seat belt it hasn't frayed up yet still retracts a little bit but not too much and again you can see a little bit of dirt spot so a little bit of shampoo can do the job carpet's nice it doesn't have floor mats on the back so eventually i might find some floor mats for the back but everything is nice right there look at that perfect back window really nice headliner is really nice everything's pretty look at that pretty pretty nice mirror does have cruise control i went ahead and delete the cruise control already um, just because i'm not going to be using it and the dashboard is in really good shape look at that has 165,000 miles and also came with a almost full tank of gas which is not good well it's kind of good but it's not good because i don't know how long this truck's gonna sit until we finish it uh, i might have to put some stabilizer in the fuel tank or else that fuel might go bad let me go ahead and pop the hood show you guys the hood it does have a typical alaska windshield but not a big deal as of right now the truck does start if you want to if you want to start it it will start <coughs> but within the first 30 seconds it's gonna start blowing smoke right away like it's a clear tail that the head gasket has definitely blown i don't know from which cylinder might be number six might be number one but head gasket is definitely here and again <coughs> Uh, there's not much coolant at all, which is really, really normal. So I don't want to start it unless I plan to move it. Once I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and maybe add a little bit of coolant and then just drive it to my front yard, which is like another 30 feet away from here. But other than that, it's a really nice, solid engine. I mean, the owner that I bought it from, he had like a pile of wrecker. Uh, maintenance record and he took really good care of it <clears throat> he's one of those guys that don't know how to fix his own truck so whenever there's something wrong or he needs to go for maintenance oil change he always took it in to a shop and he kept all the receipts from 2000 so i found one from 2019 where he had the transmission rebuilt locally <clears throat> so that's kind of nice so we know that the transmission is in good shape Hopefully the clutch is still good. Who knows? We'll find out. They did a lot of work to this. And also I found a record, a receipt from 2000 or 2001 where he took it to the actual Toyota dealership. And he took it in for the head gasket recall. So they removed it and they inspected it. The head gaskets was good, but, but they went ahead and put new head gasket. So we know that this engine has got a head gasket redone from Toyota back in 2000 which was what 23 years ago so from that till now it has lasted a pretty long time <coughs> and when it was in and when it was in 2000 i think <coughs> this vehicle only had like 50,000 miles according to all the paperwork that i read so this truck has been well taken care of this guy has done a lot of stuff to it um, i was just looking at all the receipts and everything that got done and i was just looking at all the numbers and I think he probably spent over 15000 just in maintenance alone. The transmission rebuild was like 2500 or I think 2900 So it was crazy. It was crazy to see all those receipts. But this was a good truck for him. And it was kind of sad seeing him sell it because it almost sounded like he didn't want to sell it. But at the same time, I think he just pretty much just gave up because he spent so much money fixing it in the last 20 years. And I think he was just ready for something new. So it happens. And then something really interesting is that there's also a little timing belt replacement. So it looks like the timing belt was replaced back in 2007. So back in 2007, it had only 91,000 miles from 91,000 miles to 126. 7,000 what are we at now 165 yeah 165 so this guy has definitely put a lot of miles on this truck and like i said he owned it back in 2000 when it had like 50,000 or 51,000 miles so a good uh, 150,000 plus miles under his belt and like i said i haven't looked at the air filter i haven't taken anything apart yet i don't want to disassemble this vehicle yet because i still want it to run and at least drive so when it, when i'm ready i can drive into my garage 
So we're gonna leave it as is until we find a 3-4 donor. There you have it. I hope you guys enjoy today's quick walk around on my new truck. And again, it's not really new. I have it for two weeks already. Super pumped, man. These are one of those trucks that's so hard to find. And I'm glad that I got to it. It was on Craigslist for about an hour when I got to it. I'm surprised somebody else didn't get to it first. So super blessed to have found this truck. It would have been nice if it was running, but if it was definitely running, I think it would have been cost more. I picked this up for a really good price, which I'll go ahead and tell you guys next time if you guys watch my videos. So the plan is we gotta we have to find a 3.4 donor rig first. I want to get a full donor rig if possible because it's easier to get all your parts all at once instead of having to find multiple parts, engine, ECU, EVAP box, air box, <laughs> Cala converter. You want to get everything all in one. And the thing about getting a donor is that if you get a good donor and let's say it has been wrecked but the engine's good and some parts are still good on that car, that truck, you can sell the rest of it. That's what I did on my last 3-4 swap, which pretty much paid for itself. So that's the plan. Now, I was debating, man, is Sony a head gasket? I wonder if I should just rebuild the 3.0 because the head gasket rebuild kit costs like three, 400 bucks. And then maybe the machine work might the machine work on the head might cost another 500. So I was really debating on maybe I should just rebuild that 3.0. You know, pull it open, pull the heads, check out what's going on. Hopefully the block is still good, cylinder is still good, and put a new head gasket and call it good. Put some new seals, timing belt, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, that's at the back of my mind. If we can't find a 3-4 within the next six months, we'll go ahead and do that. So let me know what you guys think. What would you guys do? 3-4 um, swap or would you guys just fix the 3.0? Me personally, I would like to do 3-4 swap because it's such a fun swap. It's easy and it's fun. It's just that right now it's super hard to find any 3-4 and nobody wants to sell the 3-4 because everyone is 3-4 swapping the world. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys enjoy my Toyota content, make sure to follow the Instagram, guys. Nutty New underscore 404. I post more stories. I post more things. If I'm working on this red truck, most likely you'll see more content there first before I put it on YouTube. But thanks for watching. I'll keep you guys posted as, as soon as we find a solution on what we're going to do with this. But this is a fun bill. I'm hoping that we get, I'm hoping to get started on this bill this summer but again that's if parts is available so thanks for watching i'll catch you guys on the next video much love talk to you guys then bye bye